Hi everyone, it's Alex from Risk Academy and this video is kind of a confession video because I am, you know, for, for those of you who follow the articles that I publish from time to time and watch some of the videos that I publish on the Risk Academy channel, you know that a, a, about a year ago, based on the kind of the collective knowledge of LinkedIn, I coined the term Risk Management 1 and Risk Management 2. Now, what I mean by those is that Risk Management 1 is whatever the regulators, the insurance companies, banks, um, audit committees, and uh, um, credit rating agencies, and kind of the rest of the external stakeholders usually expect to see in terms of risk management. And uh, since, you know, I've been doing this for quite a long time. It seems that everything the external ex uh, stakeholders want to see in terms of risk management actually has almost nothing to do with the real effective ma decision making or management or, of risks in, you know, in the context of making decisions or improving business processes or improving efficiency and you know achieving objectives. So I call risk management one window dressing which is basically something that once a year or once every six months you just put quickly prepare to get all the external stakeholders satisfied. A and then risk management too, I call risk management too everything else, all the science, all the techniques, all the tools that we have that actually support decision making. And for that we kind of you know, turn our gaze, our attention to decision sciences, probability theory, neuroeconomics and all the um, actual scientific fields that have over the years discovered a number of techniques to improve decision making, to uh, appropriately account for uncertainty when making decisions about uh, about the future or where the uncertainty uh, and where the uncertainty is high and the stakes are high. So I've, uh, I have this distinction between risk management one and risk management two. Uh, risk management one being window dressing, risk management two being you know the actual decision making tools that we use to improve the quality of decisions within the company. Now the confession is the following. I think, well I mean I, I don't think, I, I now know for a fact, I really got the name wrong because this is what actually happened in history. It should be the other way around. It should have been decision making should have been risk management one and, and risk management uh, for sta external stakeholders should have been risk management two because this is what actually happened. Um, the whole area of accounting for an uncertainty when making decisions is nowhere new. I mean five centuries ago uh, people started actually quantifying uncertainty and measuring the effect that uncertainty has on decision making and that's when kind of the probability theory started. Um, in the early uh, 20th century decision sciences really kind of came to play and in the 1980s decision sciences were solidified. In, in 1970s and 60s and 70s and then kind of closer towards the 2000s the neuroeconomics, so the studies of how human brain interacts and behaves in uncertain situation, uncertain situations. So over the last centuries, centuries, people in different fields of science have been studying, discovering and dealing with uncertainty when making decisions. And that essentially is risk management. I mean, no, none of these fields I don't think ever called it risk management. I mean, if they did, you know, by all means, correct me in the comments. Um, but really, um, n nothing that we're currently using in risk management and feel is super advanced and very helpful. None of this is new. I mean, even the Monte Carlo simulations, I mean, Im even the whole idea of simulating the future to make better decisions today about uncertainty in the future. Even that, I mean, Monte Carlo was created in 1946 or seven, I mean, I think it was 46. Um, you know, obviously, double check all of my facts in, in, in Wikipedia. And there are, I mean, there are books written about this. I mean, usually a good book starts with like this history lesson. But what I'm trying to say is that risk management in its kind of current good, useful form as a decision making tool existed hundreds of years ago. And it became even more prominent in the early to th in the early 20th century, and then something miraculous happens. I think this is what happens all the time: is that when you do something good, but that you know to do it properly, to do proper risk analysis, you have to know decision sciences, probability theory, neuroeconomics. I mean, these are highly complex mathematical fields. Of study, and I mean, neuroeconomics is just chemistry. It's it's insanely complex, 
And this is what usually happens. Uh, majority of the people don't like complexity. They don't like difficult tools. And yet they still want to make sense of stuff. They want to apply it in their day-to-day -day life. So, I mean, there's, I think it's the kind of the never-ending challenge between the actual science and the commercial side and kind of the pop side on how to make it popular. So, in the 1980s, and uh, Douglas Hubert in his book is actually trying to find that patient zero, find that uh, you know, evil mind who masterminded this risk management bullshit that we're living in right now. Um, so you know, good luck to him. I'm really looking forward to his second edition of uh, uh, the failure of risk management book and why it's still broken. Uh, but the, uh, the, the reality is just about 30 years ago, just think about this, just about 30 years ago, people outside of the field of probability theory, science, statistics, uh, mathematics, neuroscience, uh, or decision science, uh, probably auditors and uh, risk managers that were working in-house that probably didn't have the, the, you know, the baggage of knowledge of proper risk management, they decided to simplify stuff. And that's why we have heat maps, because they are very easy to understand. I mean, you know, they're, they're colorful, they make sense, they produce totally wrong, mathematically irrelevant results, but they're easy to understand. So someone less than 30 years or approximately around 30 years ago came up with this new vision for risk management and they've called it ERM. I mean, to me, uh, ERM is a dead giveaway. If somebody talks about ERM, that basically means they have nothing to do, whatever they're describing has nothing to do with proper decision science and probability theory, because this whole stream, this whole parallel universe didn't unfortunately built on what was already known as good practices in decision science and probability theory. Instead, they created their own parallel universe with risk registers, with doing quarterly or semi-annual or annual risk assessments, which are absolutely meaningless, uh, with KRIs, risk appetite statements, and um, risk owners, and all the other kind of you know, nonsense that, that, that comes with the usual risk management package. Uh, and th I find this absolutely fascinating. So we had this proper risk management happening because uh, I mean all engineers, doctors and uh, um, airline pilots, uh, even nurses, you know, use proper risk management tools. They just never called it risk management. So risk management existed forever. But then somebody literally hijacked, hijacked the risk management brand and called whatever this nonsense they came up with. ERM or risk management and this is what we now have if you open the risk management book the chances are you will probably find absolute nonsense that has nothing to do with decision science probability theory or neuroeconomics you know the, the actual science behind how people perceive and make decisions with risk so this is a, you know this is fascinating and, and that's why i think i you know i'm i made a mistake by calling risk management one this uh, um, you know, consulting BS notion, because really risk management one, you know, whatever was always happening was that proper decision science and probability theory. And then of course, this new uh, less than 30 years old notion, this parallel universe is a built on. It's basically something that you know, people just dumped, <laughs> which is you know, dumped is actually you know, no pun intended. Uh, that's a good word because they literally dumped all over uh, the proper science of risk management by creating this parallel universe of, of stupidity. Um, but anyway, so he here we are. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to change risk management one and two because just you know, so many people already using it and it kind of makes, uh, you know, it makes sense. But reality is risk management existed in its proper form, su proper scientific form of decision science, probability theory, neuroeconomics. And uh, uh, over the last probably 100 years, what people call game theory and complexity theory. I mean, they, they, those are another um, directions in science that go even further saying, well, how do you make decisions when there's a complete uncertainty? Now, and so on. Um, so there, there is this scientific foundation behind risk management. And then there's the consulting foundation and the auditor's foundation of risk management that usually has nothing to do with proper science. Um, so here we are, we live in the world um, where 
if you talk to an average person or if you come to any risk management conference uh, or if you google risk management books uh, by the way if you google free risk management book you will find my book uh, that i wrote with yelena dimidjanko and it's now the most popular book in the world on risk management because it's free and it's been downloaded probably close to 80,000 times now um, and I actually don't talk about risk management per se I talk about integration into decision making uh, but other than that if you open your if you talk to an average person speak uh, you come to an average risk management conference and open an average risk management book what you will find is this hijacked version of risk management which was you know, which actually didn't exist 30 years ago it's, it's new and, and the, the trouble is, you know, some people may think, well, if it's new, it's innovative, it's, it's uh, addressing the problems that were not addressed previously, it's coming up with the new solutions. But that's actually, I mean, if anyone you know, has been working in risk long enough, you realize that that's actually not true. Because the answers that we have in decision science and the answers we have in probability theory are so much better. And we kind of, we, you know, we're doing the full circle, we're coming back to decision trees, influence diagrams, simulations, scenario analysis, sensitivity analysis, stress testing. We're coming back to the tools that existed, you know, for hundreds of years. Um, so, you know, amazing world we're living in. Um, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. Do share underneath uh, this video and don't forget to subscribe to the Risk Academy channel on YouTube. See you later.